today we are going to discuss a very hot topic uh, that is the global warming with reference to the environmental chemistry global warming is the ongoing rise of the average temperature of the earth's climate system and has been demonstrated by direct temperature measurements and by measurements of various effects of the warming it is a major aspect of climate change which in addition to rising global surface temperatures also includes its effects such as changes in precipitation the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc concluded that human influence on climate has been the dominant cause of observed warming since the mid 20th century these findings have been recognized by the national science academies of major nations and are not disputed by any scientific body of national or international standing the largest human influence has been the emission of greenhouse gases with over 90% of the impact from the carbon dioxide and methane fossil fuel burning is the principal source of these gases with agricultural emission and deforestation also play a significant role land surfaces are heating faster than the ocean surface leading to heat waves wildfires and the expansion of deserts increasing atmospheric energy and rates of evaporation are causing more intense storms and weather extremes damaging infrastructure and agriculture surface temperature increases are greatest in the arctic which have contributed to the retreat of glacier permafrost and sea ice environmental impacts include the extinction or relocation of many species as their ecosystem change most immediately in coral reefs mountain and the arctic the warming evident in the instrumental temperature record is consistent with the wide range of observation documented by many independent scientific groups although the most common measure of global warming is the increase in the near surface atmospheric temperature over 90% of the additional energy in the climate over the last 50 years has been stored in the ocean warming it the remainder of the additional energy has melted ice and warmed the continent and the atmosphere the ocean heat take up drives thermal expansion which has contributed to observed sea level rise further indicators of climate change include an increase in the frequency and intensity of heavy precipitation melting of snow and land ice and increased atmospheric humidity flora and fauna also portray behavior consistent with warming such as the earlier timing of the spring events such as the flowering of the plant multiple independently produced instrumental data set confirm that the during the year 2009 to 2018 decades was 0.93 with the addition and subtraction of 0.07 degrees celsius temperature warmer than the pre-industrial baseline during the year 1850 to 1900 currently surface temperatures are rising by about 0.2 degrees celsius temperature or 0.36 fahrenheit per decades 
climate proxy records show that the natural variation offset the early effects of the industrial revolution so there was a little net warming between the 18th century and the mid 19th century when thermometer record began to provide global coverage the intergovernmental panel on climate change ipcc has adopted the baseline reference period 1815 to 1900 as an approximation of pre-industrial global mean surface temperature regional trend in temperature rise northern hemisphere and north pole have warmed much faster than the south pole and the southern hemisphere the northern hemisphere not only has much more land but also more snow area and sea ice because of how the land masses are arranged around the arctic ocean as these surfaces flip from being reflective to dark after the ice has melted they start absorbing more heat the southern hemisphere already had little sea ice in summer before it started warming arctic temperatures have increased and are predicted to continue to increase during this century at over twice the rate of the rest of the world as the temperature difference between the arctic and the equator decreases ocean current that have driven by that temperature difference like the gulf stream weakened now let's discuss the physical driver forces of global warming the climate system experiences various cycles which are caused by an imbalance of energy at the top of the atmosphere that are known as external forcing these forcing are external to the climate system but not always external to the earth examples of external forcing include change in composition of the atmosphere for example increased concentration of greenhouse gases solar luminosity volcanic eruption and variation in the earth's orbit around the sun now we have another potential driver for global warming that is the greenhouse gases or greenhouse effect we will discuss greenhouse effect in detail in a separate lecture here we only have a furtive glance at greenhouse gases or greenhouse effect as a potential driver for global warming so greenhouse gases trap heat radiating from the earth to space this heat in the form of infrared radiation gets absorbed and emitted by these gases in the atmosphere thus warming the lower atmosphere and the surface before the industrial revolution naturally occurring amounts of greenhouse gases caused the air near the surface to be warmer by about 33 degrees celsius temperature or 59 fahrenheit then it would be in their absence without the earth's atmosphere the earth's average temperature would be well below the freezing temperature of the water while water vapor nearly 50% and clouds nearly 25% are the biggest contributors to the greenhouse effect they increase as a function of temperature and are therefore considered feedbacks increased concentrations of gases such as carbon dioxide nearly 20% ozone and nitrogen oxides are external forcing on the other hand 
Ozone acts as a greenhouse gas in the lower layer of the atmosphere, the troposphere. Furthermore, it is highly reactive and interacts with other greenhouse gases and aerosols. The next factor is the land surface change. Humans change the Earth's surface mainly to create more agricultural land. Today, agriculture takes up 50% of the world's habitable land while 37% is forest. And that later figure continues to decrease largely due to the continued forest loss in the tropics. This deforestation is the most significant aspect of land use change, affecting global warming. The main causes are deforestation through permanent land use change for agricultural products such as beef and palm oil 27%, foresty oblique forest products 26%, short term agricultural cultivation 24% and wildfires 23%. In addition to impacting greenhouse gas concentrations, land use changes affect global warming through a variety of other chemical and physical dynamics. Changing the type of vegetation in a region impacts the local temperature by changing how much sunlight gets reflected back into space called albedo and how much heat is lost by evaporation. For instance, the change from a dark forest to grassland makes the surface lighter, causing it to reflect more sunlight. Defrostation can also contribute to changing temperatures by affecting the release of aerosol and other chemical compounds that affect clouds and by changing wind pattern when the land surface has different obstacles. Here is natural forcing. As the sun is the earth's primary energy source, changes in incoming sunlight directly affects the climate system. Solar irradiance has been measured directly by satellites and indirect measurements are available beginning in the early 60s. There has been no upward trend in the amount of the sun's energy reaching the earth, so it cannot be responsible for the current warming. Physical climate models are also unable to reproduce the rapid warming observed in recent decades when tucking into the account only variation in the solar output and volcanic activities. Another line of evidence for the warming not being due to the sun is how temperature changes differ at different levels in the Earth's atmosphere. According to the basic physical principles, the greenhouse effect produces warming of the lower atmosphere, that is the troposphere, but cooling of the upper atmosphere, that is the stratosphere. If solar variations were responsible for the observed warming, warming of both the troposphere and the stratosphere would be expected. But it has not been the case. Here are the models, projections and carbon budget with reference to the global warming. A climate model is a representation of the physical, chemical, and biological processes that affect the climate system. 
computer models attempt to reproduce and predict the circulation of the ocean the annual cycle of the season and the flows of carbon between the land surface and the atmosphere there are more than two dozen scientific institutions that develop climate models models not only project different future temperatures with different emissions of greenhouse gases but also do not fully agree on the strength of different feedbacks on climate sensitivity and the amount of inertia of the system these models are also used to estimate the remaining carbon emission budget carbon emission budget means an emission budget or carbon budget or emission quota or allowable emission is an upper limit of total carbon dioxide emission associated with the remaining below a specific global average temperature an emission budget may also be associated with objectives for other related climate variables such as radiative forcing so according to the ipcc global warming can be kept below 1.5 degrees celsius temperature with a two thirds chance if emission after 2018 do not exceed 420 or 570 total carbon dioxide depending on the choice of the measure of global temperature this amount corresponds to 10 to 13 years of current emission there are high uncertainty about the budget in either direction the physical realism of models is tested by examining their ability to stimulate contemporary or past climates past models have underestimated the rate of arctic shrinkage and underestimate the rate of precipitation increase sea level rise since 1990 was underestimated in older models but now agrees well with observation the 2017 united states published national climate assessment notes that climate models may still be underestimating or missing relevant feedback processes emission scenarios can be combined with modeling of the carbon cycle to predict how atmospheric concentration of greenhouse gases might change in the future according to these combined models by the year 2100 the atmospheric concentration of carbon dioxide could be as low as 380 or as high as 1400 ppm or parts per million depending on the shared socioeconomic pathway the world takes and the mitigation scenario the 10th emission gap report issued by the united nations environment program predicts that if emission continue to increase at the same rate as they have in 2010 to 2020 global temperature would rise by as much as 4 degrees celsius temperature by the year 2100 effects on weather The main impact of global warming on the weather is an increase in extreme weather events such as heat waves, 
droughts cyclones blizzards and rainstorms of the 20th costliest climate and weather disaster that have occurred in the united states since 1980 eight have taken place since 2010 four of these in 2017 alone such events will continue to occur more often and with great intensities episodes of intense precipitation contribute to flooding soil erosion landslides and damage to structure and crops precipitation high temperatures lead to increased evaporation and surface drying as the air warms its water holding capacity also increases particularly over the ocean in general the air can hold about 7% more moisture for every 1 degree celsius of temperature rise in the tropics there is more than 10% increase in precipitation of a 1 degree celsius increase in temperature changes have already been observed in the amount intensity frequency and type of precipitation temperature over most land areas since the 1950s it is very likely that at all times of year both days and nights have become warmer due to human activities these may have been changes in other climate extreme but these changes are more difficult to identify projections suggest changes in the frequency and intensity of some extreme weather events in the united states since 1999 two warm weather records have been set or broken for every cold one some changes like more frequent hot days will probably be evident in the near term which means 2016 to 2035 while other near term changes for example more intense droughts and tropical cyclones are more uncertain heat waves global warming boosts the probability of extreme weather events such as heat waves where the daily maximum temperature exceeds the average maximum temperature by 5 degree celsius or 9 degree fahrenheit for more than 5 consecutive days in the last 30 to 40 years heat waves with a high humidity have become more frequent and so extremely hot nights have doubled the frequency the area in which extremely hot summers are observed has increased 50 to 100 folds tropical cyclones global warming not only causes changes in tropical cyclones it may also make some impacts from where worse via sea level rise 
the intensity of tropical cyclone for example hurricanes or typhoons is projected to increase globally with the proportion of category 4 and 5 tropical cyclones increasing furthermore the rate of rainfall is projected to increase but trends in the future frequency on a global scale are not yet clear changes in tropical cyclone will probably vary by region effects on land flooding when air holds more water vapors than this turns to rain it tends to come in heavy downpour potential leading to more floods a 2017 study found that peak precipitation is increasing between 5 and 10% for every 1 degree celsius increase In the United States and many other parts of the world there has been a marked increase in intense rainfall events which have resulted in more severe flooding estimates of the number of people at risk of coastal flooding from climate driven sea level rise varies from 1 in 19 million to 300 million or even 640 million in a worst case scenario related to the inability of the antarctica ice sheet wildfires prolonged periods of warmer temperatures typically cause soil and underbrush to be drier for long periods increasing the risk of wildfire hot and dry conditions increase the likelihood that wildfires will be more dense and burn for a longer once they started Global warming has increased summertime air temperatures in California by over 3.5 degree Fahrenheit as that the fire season has lengthened by 75 days over previous decades as a result since the 1980s both the size and ferocity of fires in california have increased dramatically since in 1970s the size of the air burned has increased five fold while 15 of the 20th largest fires in california has occurred since 2000 In Australia the annual number of hot days about 35 degree celsius temperature and hot, very hot days about 40 degree celsius temperature has increased significantly in many areas of the country the country has always had bush fires but in 2019 the extent and ferocity of these fires increased dramatically for the first time catastrophic bushfire conditions were declared for greater sydney new south wales and queen island declared a state of emergency but fires were also burning in south australia and western australia cryosphere 
the cryosphere is made up of those parts of the planet which are very cold they are frozen and covered by snow or ice this includes ice and snow on land such as the continental ice sheets in greenland and antarctica as well as glaciers and areas of snow and permafrost ice found on water including frozen parts of the ocean such as the water surrounding antarctica and the arctic the cryosphere especially the polar region is extremely sensitive to changes in global climate cryosphere the cryosphere is made up of those parts of the planet which are very cold they are frozen and covered by snow or ice this includes ice and snow on land such as the continental ice sheets in greenland and antarctica as well as glaciers and areas of snow and permafrost ice found on water including frozen parts of the ocean such as the water surrounding antarctica and the arctic the cryosphere especially the polar region is extremely sensitive to changes in global climate arctic sea ice began to decline at the beginning of the 20th century but the rate is accelerating since 1979 satellite records indicate the decline in summer sea ice coverage has been found about 13% per decade the thickness of the sea ice has also decreased by 66% in the last 6 decades with a shift from permanent ice to largely seasonal ice cover while the ice free summer are expected to be rare at 1.5 degree celsius of warming they are said to occur at least once every decade at a warming level of 2 degree celsius heat take up ocean have been taken up about 90% of the excess heat accumulated on earth due to global warming the warming rate varies with depth at a depth of 1000 meters the warming occurs at a rate of almost 0.4 per century data from 1981 to 2019 whereas the warming rate at 2 km depth is only half as well as air having effects on ecosystem warming reduces the ocean ability to absorb carbon dioxide it is likely that the ocean warmer faster between 1993 to 2017 compared to the period starting in 1969